Okay. So the agenda for this session is, uh, first I'd like to set up the context that uh, why um, I think it's worth talking about uh, taking this like different approach for diagnostics, then I would like to show a proposal how we could do that. And I think there is some open questions, which I hope we can have alignment or at least collect some feedback and thinking about them uh, together. Uh, during the context setup, I will share some um, pain points currently, what I believe we are facing. Uh, please don't take them as the critics on Node.js or the diagnostic. I, I really thank you for everyone for the hard work what we are doing. It's more about the focus where we are putting the uh, over. Uh, and basically today, I think that <coughs> one huge missing is that we don't have the use cases documented. So I think everyone has in their mind that what does it mean diagnosing the Node.js process like? I can have a memory leak. My process can crash for different reasons, but we are all prioritizing those use cases which our company or ourselves are facing, and we don't really have a collection and the priorities what actual Node.js users are facing. Um, and we don't really have alignment and priority on what we are planning to work for, what to make easier for these users. It also means that we are not just not really knowing those use cases, but we also don't know how users trying to handle them. So I think we can all agree that memory leak is, for example, one of the use cases which probably uh, affects many, many Node.js users. And today you can diagnose a memory leak in many different ways. You can use the Chrome key snapshot, you can use uh, the sampling key profiler, you can use uh, G-Core to get the code down, then write scripts, there are npm libraries which try and detect memory leaks. There are many, many ways, and I'm pretty sure I have already uh, missed some of them. Uh, it would be also nice, not just learning what our users are doing today, and uh, instead of that, kind of coming out with an idea user journey. What would be the really powerful one that we can use in both production environment, development environment, which both works on Linux, OS X and probably has a UI or API, but it can be another feature. So something that would uh, satisfy all the use cases. Uh, and also today we are really focusing on specific tools. Uh, we have more than 25 uh, tools uh, recognized by the diagnostic group, what we are planning to put in top of this. Um, but we have tools which, uh, for one use case, we have more than one tool. Um, and this kind of led uh, this uh, situation that there is no real recommended tool for the use cases. Uh, as I already mentioned, we have way too many of them, so we are kind of spread thin when we are trying to, to work on those tools and make it better. And we are not providing any long term support on them. So today, any of Node.js dynasty tools can break basically. Uh, for the next version. I mean, obviously, we have ones which we feel stronger. We are going to find stronger for not breaking them. But technically, there is nothing today but saying that we shouldn't break this or that. Um, and then they already mentioned that some of the tools only works in some of the environments are better or less better for different uh, use cases. Um, for the non cross platform tooling, we would be friends with the CPU compiler, uh, for example. And Linux Spark, uh, both of them are powerful tools for slightly different things. Uh, one of them only works on it. Uh, so I believe we have some favor problems uh, with diagnostics. And I hope that being more focused and capturing uh, those use cases and user journeys, we can be more uh, uh, focused around uh, what we are trying to do. Um, so I would like to hear making kind of proposal how we could, uh, how we could do this. Um, one thing is, I think this is the zero step in the um, kind of collecting and agreeing what are the supported use cases. So have just having a list of what the user is trying to do when we are talking about diagnosing the Node.js process. And let's try to identify that which are the really important ones, which we have uh, the energy to go after in the first round. I'm pretty sure there are use cases like we were talking about today, embedded systems, testers. I'm 100% I sure they have different use cases than one in Node.js and workers and APIs, uh, but probably we should go after the ones that, uh, in, at least in the first round, 
uh, which affects the most energy assets. Um, I think it would be also beneficial to learn how these users uh, trying to go after the use cases today and creating the ideal user journeys um, to really being able to identify the gap between what we have today and what we want to achieve in the future. That would really make in a natural way of the action items and the tools. Um, yes, and the final step, I, it's, I believe this is something which uh, we are kind of far from today um, to kind of um, thinking about what use case we can support between LDS users. And on purpose, I'm not talking about two links here. So I strongly believe that we should kind of stop thinking about like Linux for, for example, has to be supported for all the Node.js feature releases. We should really think about like, for example, we want to have a way to diagnose native frames between all the Node.js releases. Uh, and meaning of that, I believe we should shift the focus of tooling uh, to more the use cases and user journeys um, and basically um, start to document the best practices, start to, start to think about more what users trying to do, what tooling we have today. Um, so here I would like to give some uh, opportunities to there is someone who has a pro or a contra opinion about um, starting to see in use cases and user journeys. Um, silence is disagreement, always. Um. <laughs> <laughs> silence is agreement. Oh, silence is agreement. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, uh, then you can continue. Great. Um, so basically, um, I started to work on kind of a document where I started to collect use cases. Obviously, these are use cases which in my hand, so I'm pretty sure the list is incomplete. Uh, so you can find this document in either um, in the proposal that we created in the diagnostic group, or I will share this presentation later. So basically this document is, um, I really hope that we can move later to the Node.js diagnostic repo and uh, talk to you in the space. Uh, basically it has two bigger sections. One is kind of collecting the use cases. Another one is collecting uh, the current tools that are available. I'm pretty sure I missed a bunch of them. So really it was more what was in my head. Um, and let's see the structure of one of the use cases, like I was mentioned the memory leak detection um, a lot. So let's start with that one. So basically all of the use cases follow the structure that you have kind of the symptom section. So as a user, what you are maybe observing um, when it's suspicious that you are facing a biggest issue. Um, some of them has a side effect because it's sometimes not that obvious that uh, why you are seeing those symptoms. Um, so that can give you a picture as a user that what we are facing. I believe <coughs> this action can be uh, really useful, for example, working on uh, best practices and having uh, users to even figure out what, what we are uh, facing. Then there is a debugging section, and this is a section which is quite uh, non-complete. Um, so um, it has two sections, the ID user journey and the current user journey, so it's kind of uh, the idea user journey is green field. It's some of them is not even possible probably. Um, and um, and then there is a little table um, which is more about what tools today uh, what we recognize in the support tiers for the diagnostic group um, can be used for this use case and what are the existing gaps. Um, and as soon as soon we have the same for all the use cases and the end of the document. We have been into the tools. Uh, each tool has kind of a little explanation what it is, where you can find it, and uh, uh, kind of what are the pros and cons when you are using this tool um, when they are working. Um, so that's the, that's the structure that I started to think about. 
Uh, I asked some folks opinion about the structure, mainly uh, my brother and Finnish. Um, thank you for the feedback. Uh, but obviously, I would be happy if I could um, get the feedback from more people and kind of start to extend those use cases. Um, and that's really when we could start to think about prioritizing. So first, first I think it would be beneficial just to capture as much information as we can. Is there any question about the um, document or where should it leave on how to collect the information? No? Okay. Um, then this is a more collaborative part where I hope we can have uh, uh, good conversations. Um, so there are some questions if we want to want to start to be more uh, use case driven. Why is, first of all, what are the supportive efforts? So Node.js can be used in so many environments today and, uh, and it's not obvious that, uh, that which one can we have the biggest impact. So I looked to the Node.js service and it looks like that most people use this for web APIs, web rendering maybe, uh, but, but service is basically the only source what we have. Um, so the proposal is basically start with those use cases uh, and basically one question is how we can collect more information and how frequently should we revisit uh, this problem. Is, is the annual survey available for everyone? So, so my, my question was, does the annual survey already have questions in the If I remember correctly, the annual survey question is basically which environment are you using more and for what use cases. So it's not very good. So I, I was just wondering, uh, if there's uh, <coughs> any kind of diagnost like diagnostics slash analytics feedback loop that's built into the runtime uh, that's around like automated like generating generating automated feedback. Um, I don't think I've ever seen like an in-depth discussion, but it has come up at certain times. Like, could we somehow get, you know, have it called home and have some sense of data? But that very quickly becomes in a conversation where people are concerned, and like, I don't think a lot of people would turn that on. Yeah. I think even earlier this week, though, people were talking about some of the concerns. Maybe that. Yeah, so that was something that came out yesterday when we talked about implications and like gathering numbers about usage. And uh, so, so we had some ideas for how we could actually do some kind of node.js telemetry, uh, which is like integrating that into testing frameworks, you know, code coverage frameworks, like basically have it opt, uh, have it opt in on the node level, but opt out of those uh, levels. Uh, that will, for example, work very well when you're just running code in Travis CI or something. And just on that, that note, um, following the conversation yesterday, I did open a PR um, that uh, adds a internal only telemetry function that will uh, emit to trace event log um, using a new node, uh, node telemetry category. Um, off by default, um, obviously, they're tracing additional stuff that it puts a lot more noise in there. Uh, but all it does, you know, is simply just a, a, a trace instance that we can discount how many times that thing's been used, but it's, it's, it's a start along that direction. Yeah, so I'm just like, like I, I'm just curious if like the node project is like at a critical level at this point where like, like by not having this like ability to collect this information in the wild, like we're shooting ourselves in the foot, you know, even though it's something that needs to be done like really responsibly, you know? Uh, data collection, like, is, I mean, like, I, I'm, like, hashtag, like, stop tracking, like, Brave is, like, 
curious if the conversation is like actually worth revisiting. Um, and like at the very end, like like what's the MVP? Like what would that look like? And um, you know, and uh, yeah. Do you know of any runtime languages that do do that, right? Like that, that's sort of the, you know, I, my first question to that kind of thing is like, is somebody else successfully, yeah. So I know there's people who call back home, but it hasn't been the runtimes and it has also been controversial. So it'd be great to get the data. And I know in other languages we've talked about it as well, but it just never happened because people are, that's one of the, you know, your confidential data is just, you just don't want that going out. Yeah, and, and it's not, yeah, and, and that's why I said like it's about MVP and like what is like the minimal piece of information that was like so like not an issue, right? Um, and it's like anything like no, like nothing that would tell a pattern, you know, about like what you're doing. It's really just like metrics on like where you're doing it, and maybe how often or something, you know. And so, um, and and for me, like I'm thinking of Mac OS, right? Um, because I mean, also this is just an open source. It's an open source project, and it's, it's it's used at such a scale. Um, that it's a, the scale is so large. It, I think there's a case to be made here that like, hey, users of Node, like, if you really love this project, like, you really want this data, and it's going to be used responsibly, and it's you know, and it's and 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 there's no patterns. There's no no inference that can be made here other than to improve, um, like, to improve the existing infrastructure and or like help us prioritize our backlog, you know. I mean, I'm just thinking, I think it's actually not a bad thing, but I don't know that it's actually critical to this particular yeah. discussion, right? Like it's a survey or something might actually get what's needed. And, and in fact, I think for the best practices, it's best to just choose what we think the best ones are and move forward, rather than worrying about like that you get the absolute best one. Yeah, I agree with, with, yeah, with both points that we should start to collect the data and sounds like um, what the for the API deprecation, this effort already started, so maybe we should just uh, share that the diagnostics requirements are also included in the effort. And yes, the question is really what is that? Uh, is there anyone who thinks that we should block uh, this effort until the survey, or, or should we, uh, can we run basically what we, we think and what data we have from the previous survey? Like, would it be interesting to just put up the list and have everybody put up and show of hands which one they would be most interested in? Not to say that that's like not like we're holding, but just you know, get another sense. Okay, yeah. Um, who would be interested, uh, or who is using Node for API, like web, web API, basically return JSON data? Okay, so that's like Danish. Uh, who is using Node for rendering, like we are rendering website? Yeah, half of them. Um, who is using more broker kind of than I'm say broker? I more, mean more like um, consuming a message broker, so not a real time type of similar amount. Um, how about front end tooling? Okay, it's so it looks like API is the most, and all of the rest is pretty much the same amount. So I would say many, many. Um, yeah. The other thing too is like, is are these really that different? Like, if you have a best practice for first one, is it is there something about using it for the you know, that's right that's right? a very valid question. I think it's more about the environment. So, for example, content including is running uh, mostly on the CI stand, the developer computer, right? Why uh, API and worker running in server environment and looking from another angle? Usually the worker kind of uh, uh, processes <laughs> are not that latency sensitive than APIs, so it's probably more accepted to doing more disruptive uh, debugging, maybe even stopping the process, because sure, you just put back the queue and, and that's it. Uh, but that's a very wide question. Okay, I'm, I'm not expecting that we will make a decision, but it sounds like um, maybe we we don't have to block the effort on this, and we can uh, we can find way basically the use cases uh, and the support based on when we have real use of data. So I'm just wondering. Um, I 
I don't know if you have uh, plans in your agenda to just or, uh, discuss the issue of um, um, breaking changes and support over versions of SNL for diagnostic tools. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. And then also potentially some um, deprecation or pruning of tools and or consolidation of tools. Since you said that there was like 25 plus or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I have an open question around that, which is more um, more about uh, having a long-term support, but not on specific tools, more on a use case. So like, you can you will always provide a way to you to, I don't know, debug the memory. Uh, I, I will talk a little bit about that when we arrive there. Um, okay, then I'm moving, moving forward with, uh, uh, with this, and <laughs> we arrive to the topic. Uh, so, we had a lot of conversation on the last couple of diagnostic summits that when we started to work on these support tiers, I think we identified four tiers. One of them is that every commit on master should pass. The second one is every ATS, please. I'm, really, actually, I'm not sure completely about the tiers, um, but you can get the idea, it's kind of having uh, uh, support tiers. And we started to put tools, kind of what we expect that a specific tool, like I don't know the Chrome uh, sampling profiler in which tier should it be. Um, so this is ongoing progress. But now I was thinking about that maybe instead of tooling, it's fine if the tooling is changes. I mean, it's not preferred because companies maybe start to build higher level features on specific tools. So it's definitely not preferred. But maybe it's a better approach if we say that we will always give you a way to deal with your diagnostic use case. So maybe it changes between two release, maybe it will be different tools. Um, and let me give some historical reason why I started to be more leaning into that. Um, so Netflix is heavily using code dumps when it was a spreadsheet to see variables, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, and there were lots of pushback on the community on this tool because it's not really what everyone uses. So it's, it's clearly not the highest priority uh, of people who are working uh, with this technology. And we were putting a lot of thoughts how we could replace our code dump based processes to, to kind of not having these hard requirements in our uh, environment. And basically, if you start to log more data, if you start to put extra properties on the error, now we have in the node 12 this new the, uh, the kind of exception is logging out the properties. So actually, there are other ways how you can deal with the use case, and we are not there yet. Uh, and probably it won't be one tool in the future, uh, but maybe by multiple solutions, you can have something which is feature parity. Um, so that's where I'm coming from personally, that it would be great to having one tool and support them multiple releases, but if it's not possible, can we at least make that commitment that you can always deal with a specific use case in Node, and we will always give you a documentation of best practice, a recommended tool for that, even if it changes between different releases. Uh, so the open question to the group is basically, who believes uh, we should still stick to tools? Um, please raise your hand if, if you believe that we should still focus to tools instead of use cases when we are talking about long-term support. I don't see hands, then let me twist the question a little bit to have some conversation around it. Um, who believes that we shouldn't focus at the long-term support in use cases? You know, hands. Okay, let me twist more of one, one hand. <laughs> Um, the, maybe the question should be like, do we have sufficient use cases to cover the tools? I, I, I feel like, uh, when you ask that question, it, it seems like a yes to me because I'm just imagining that my favorite, there's a use case for my favorite tool, so like you won't break my favorite tool. Um, I can only give the answer that that's why I believe we should start to collaborate on that document and make it more official and collect the use cases and identify the tools. I don't really have better answer today. Um, but I agree with you until we have vague use cases, not really specified, but then we can't, uh, can't ensure that those will be supported because we don't want to have support or something and give us. So at least that's my opinion. I'm not so fussy one way or the other, but I think we have to have testing in place, regardless of which one it is. 
because that's the only way you'll sort of recognize soon enough that it's broken to be able to make sure it's not broken by the time you go out. Right? Like, so it's whether it's the specific tools or specific use cases, we need to make sure that that's tested very early and often enough to be able to get towards what you're hoping for, which is like the next one you put that with an answer. I absolutely agree on that. Um, and I think the really hard question will be there that when the test starts to break, then should we fix the tool or should we find an alternative? I think that will be uh, yeah, not I, always an easy question. Yeah, I think that, that, like you said, it's probably in most cases, hopefully easier to just fix the tool or fix it. But if you can, switching to something else seems like a reasonable, like, it does seem like the right way to just make it flexible enough to say, well, you know, easiest or the, I forget any of the words, but like the sort of, at least path of least resistance is just to fix what you've got. I'd like to be flexible enough to say, well, yeah, that's not working out. We need to do something else. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, so how about this? The test coverage is not always good enough. Actually, we have seen recently an um, issue when we had a, uh, Test for Linux for, for, for example, and many, many crazy reasons, it's still broken. Not anymore, but it was broken for a while. Uh, and uh, so, can we have some kind of process to kind of check on the use case that it's supported if you release this? Is it like maybe a manual process or some, some way? So just, just to be sure that passing a test is not always means that the user will be able to. Yeah, I mean, so I, what you guys are talking about, sorry, I don't know why he gave you. Um, uh, what you guys are talking about is like this really interesting paradigm for me around like testing, um, like like a di diagnostics testing, t testing, diagnostics testing, like, you know, and so I think there's like a whole infrastructure that needs to be set up. And I think it's a little bit of a different mental model than what we're thinking about when we think of conformance tests or unit tests or integration tests. Like, this is a very different kind of test. You know, it's more like a robot test. <laughs> so, so, run around. Yeah. Uh, uh, another thing to, uh, just another way to consider it. Um, the diagnostic tools can be based on top of it, right? Like, like the, uh, uh, even uh, the face of log, that kind of thing, right? There's one of the ways that we could approach this is not just the use case, but testing the contract. And we're not necessarily testing the tools, but you know, we can verify that if the trace event log format changes, or if the uh, 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 the inspector protocol, you know, if any part of the wire format changes, those are things that we can we can build test tests for more specifically. Uh, in case in point, we have our, our clinic tool. Where one change we made that the trace event format output that of course change in that tool. We, we would not expect, you know, notes to block on whether that is working or not. But if the output changes, if the trace event output changes, that's something we would, you know, now that you're basically changing the diagnostic contract. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, I have a question for you on like, are we contracting on the inputs and the outputs? Uh, for the diagnostic, I think we would only be contracting on the, the, the diagnostic now. Um, so I think this, what James said, was a bit uh, leads back to the original conversation that should be seen on the use case instead of tooling, because as you mentioned, we can't really, um, the node core can't really block on something which doesn't even own necessarily. Um, yeah, so, so it's a little bit for me leads back to the suitable, just to be sure that there's always a way to do what the user was doing in previous versions and future versions as well. Right, I guess just extending what you just said, it's like, you, you know, the project can say we need to have data exported which allows you to implement the use case. So the tool may be broken, but if it's ever a major change, changing that field, which may be accessible, acceptable, but tooling has yeah. But that might still be a case where you say, well, it's still possible. Yeah. Yes. And, but you could try and say, but we're not going to break the this thing that generates the data. If it's not generating the data at all, then that's actually a problem. If the tool can no longer be consumed for some reason, maybe that's something that you have to 
Yeah, basically, I'm saying that I think it's not good if you have a gap in diagnostics, even for specific amount of time. So I would definitely block on actually an LTS release if there is no way to do what, what is a support thing to do. So not necessarily the same tool, but, but you, there has to be a way. Why, yeah, why, so, uh, yeah, and again, like, this is a total, like, newbie question, but, like, I guess, why are diagnostics not already first class in Node? Because it seems like you're asking for permission to be first class, and for me, as, like, a user, I'm like, of course they should be first class. How can you ship me without support for, like, diagnostics? And it's, like, just curious why. Um, yes, that's, that's a very good question. Uh, do, do they have a good answer? I, I don't think there's a good answer other than it hasn't been made. So there have been some diagnostics, but they haven't been as heavily used, you know, they've been maybe used by some else that are Sorry, they haven't been as heavily used, maybe not by used as broadly of the by broadly, broadly enough by the community that there was like an uproar. Or we didn't also I and I'll come back to the testing part. Like it's not that there was an intent not to keep things working. But unless you have the testing in place, it's very easy to not realize. And even when you do have that testing in place, right? So for me, it's all about getting as much testing in place as you can, because then when people see that it's no longer work, it, the default is to get the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. Early on, some of the diagnostic tools were just not part of Node Core. The Google open source a couple of diagnostic tools to generate plain graphs that so were just using lab modules and we, we never started the conversation about maybe this is something that don't call us on like the binary to generate a thing that um, so so they could if not call it an own the tool then yeah. then it, they could, it, 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 like it's not something that it can maintain. Have you approached uh, so uh, two points on that so uh, we have a uh, the tool called ZeroX is generating playgrounds. This is an example of this where we're going to be doing that to as well as the diagnostic tool to uh, So that's one thing. Um, going back to the thing with regards to supported diagnostics, um, part of the reason that the trace event API is experimental still, and there's no path yet for it to become non experimental, is that we do not have use cases that, can, that we can point to that. Um, will describe how it is always supposed to work. Right? We have some traces that we're that we're emitting, but there, you know, there's not a, a, a solid enough set of use cases around it of how it's supposed to continue working. Right. So, so I guess maybe it's fair to say what leads back to the beginning of the presentation that we need to document what are the use cases, agree what we support, what we expect, how they are used, provide the best practices, and then we can start to see about what it means diagnostic first as citizen for node and support team. Okay, um, so it looks like it, this specific question has a dependency first, so I would recommend to move, move on. Um, so the rest of the side, slides basically about uh, just drawing some uh, unicorn future. Um, Basically, having uh, these always supported use cases between releases, uh, always having best practices, um, and we are working towards the ideal journey and uh, to minimize the pooling gaps. Um, and basically, there are other questions which uh, we can pick some of them because uh, we still have like 15 minutes. Um, uh, which are related in this uh, initiative. Um, basically, one of them is how do we influence those that align the user journeys? Um, this is a question more, we discussed is that not every diagnostic tool is uh, basically in the node repo or kind of maintained by node developers. So how we can influence something uh, and have the contract for testing, for example, when it's owned by the community? Is there any idea, comment, or this? No. Okay. No, you 
So, okay, so I, I, two points here. Like, one is like these, this is like such an interesting paradigm where like oh, the open source community is developing tools that are like extremely critical to the ecosystem. And so I don't know what the approach is for like, or what the process is for like approaching them to see if they'd be willing to kind of like, you know, make it part of the core. Um, and um, great way to get a bunch of new maintainers too. <laughs> but, so, um, and then like, I guess the other question I have is around like, um, the, the, uh, uh, like the, the numbers, you said that like uh, people don't complain enough, right? Because you're, you're, and it makes it makes it seem that diagnostics is like less important and therefore maybe it shouldn't be first class and blocking. But the reality is like there's it's a sub 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 it's a very it's a sub group of node users that are even going to use diagnostic tools, right? And so I think if you're if you're if you're used to kind of like hearing a lot about complaints, um, you can't like you, you can't treat they don't have the same weight, you know what I mean? Like they're never going to have the same weight because they don't have the same user base. And so ultimately, like the threshold should be much lower than it than it should, than it is. Is my guess um, in, in reference to diagnostics because I think you have to. It's a different like lens. You, know, you can't. It's not. It's not a tool that everyone is going to use, but it's very important for the people who do use it, and it's important for us to support it. Yes, that's a very good point, and kind of leads back to uh, the question that kind of onboarding more enterprise companies for Node.js, I believe would require more focus on diagnostics, uh, at least when you are reaching out to other enterprises. Uh, um, that was a shared opinion. I do have another on enterprise. So the other reason why the noise, the noise factor might be low is because a lot of these enterprises, are, the companies are, it's cold, cold source. And so there isn't a culture of like open source or inner source. You know what I mean? Um, so that's another thing to really keep in mind. Um, but I could be wrong. Too. Yeah, and there are definitely companies who, for example, they are just not upgrading node. So they pick a version which uh, diagnostic kind of works. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so one question could be around this, which summarizes this more that should we aim to move uh, some tools to the under the Node Foundation repos and have more uh, support from, from the foundation, or or it's not necessary. We can we can work around this and not open. Okay. Uh, I, I think a model similar to what we do with um, Premier and Goldman. Um, you know, we have if, if, if these tools that, that are out there, we can build a collection room and have their own test suites, right? That, where they can basically self test uh, against there. And whenever we do are making changes within core, we can basically just run those test suites. Uh, and and so, so, at the very least, we have a heads up of what, what, uh, what's going to break. Um, something like that, I think, would probably be the best we should do at this point. So it sounds like you are advocating on more the contract kind of test yeah. rather than owning those projects. Right. But that's a fair point. If we have good diagnostic APIs and it provides the necessary data, then the community can always build on top of that. Uh, I'm just reconciling with that if you mentioned you wanted to see if the link would be open. Uh, no, zero X. Zero X. Yeah. So it's kind of, because it's kind of like, it's that balance between the there's a wide range community with lots of competing tools. You don't want to get in the way of that. If there's no competing tool but it's really critical to know, then maybe we should just start out the project. It's not core necessarily, although we move a few things in where that makes sense. But having some projects under the node project itself does make testing easier and things like that. How can, I think it's really a case by case. How, how can we make that decision? So I, I, usage don't, data or, uh, I don't know that there's any, like, you're going to be able to say, here are the rules. I think it's more like if somebody says, well, this one I think is critical, and they can make the case, and then people all look at it and see that there's not, it's not like the same. There's competing, you know, despite competing ones, you don't want to actually stop that competition, right? If there's no, if there's only one project or zero project that do, that do that, then it's an easier case to say, well, it needs more support, it needs more. So it sounds like you're more on if, if 
probably there is one project that maybe that's under resourced. So maybe then when foundation can lift it off because it's still an uh, important part of that system. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, that could be a reasonable way forward. Uh, that was about some tooling use cases. Um, and just to wrapping up this whole uh, session, basically uh, one way to move forward would be, so first of all, we should collect the use cases, which I have no better idea than please start to put your thoughts into the document. Um, and let's see which one um, is, uh, or maybe even plus one next. So, so we need to find some way how to, how to identify the use cases. You know what, not put plus ones now, just let's collect what we have and prioritize later. Um, then after the prioritization, we should have kind of deep dives. We were doing that before with the diagnostic working group, kind of um, the usual bi-weekly, so having, we have the usual bi-weekly things when we are going through the, the in-progress action items, but sometimes we do deep dives when we are picking one specific topics, people who are interested in showing up and discussing that. So we could have a deep dive pair use cases, kind of discussing uh, what would be the ideal world, what actually the use case looks like, um, what we are missing today. Uh, so that could be one way forward. Um, having one deep dive, like months, two weeks, probably it will be a longer effort, but I think even if we make progress on one to use cases, that, that could be a good initial uh, uh, result. And this is where I have these uh, unicorn slides, which I forget that uh, everything is close to the ideal and always supported and everything is cross-platform accessible and uh, it increases the Node.js usage. Um, I really hope we can reach this one day. Um, and thank you for the attention. We have 10 minutes so I finished earlier, which we can either give it back to the break or if someone has a question, then please raise your or maybe it's not great. I'm sorry. Let me change it. There is no break, so sorry. So please don't go.